A warm welcome back to Stone Valley for episode 10 with me, Mr. Sealy P. I'm on my way back from doing a contract. Uh, and on my way back I suddenly thought, you know what, I'm going to go and get some lime because I want to lime um, field 17 to try and get the best yield we can off of it. Um, so I'm going to grab a full load. This is the lime point here at the kind of... Uh, oh, it's not a truck stop, is it? The truck stop's the diner. Um, anyway. I'm going to get some here at the lime point. We're by field 10. I think it's field 10. Yeah. Um... Or could be field 11, regardless of which field it is. Um, I don't know how much it's going to cost, but at the end of the day, I'm hoping the outlay now will cover potential benefit um, moving forward. That's the plan. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Hang on a second. This is being done during editing, by the way. <laughs> I don't have some magic wand I can do this with. Okay, now this 70,000 I'm hoping is going to go much further than just on field 17. I'm going to take it back, I'm going to put it into the silo at the farm because we've got the multi fruit extension on there. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to use this. I'll do the same with this, I'll speed this up a little bit. And then I'll go and grab a um, lime spreader and we'll get it done. The sun's dipping, 6.30 in the evening, um, contracting is continuing, I, I said I was going to, um, but I am going to lime field 17. So as you've already seen, on my way back from finishing off a harvest contract, um, after packing the um, lorry away in the trailer, I then went off and did another one. Um, on my way back I stopped and picked up a load of lime, um, put it into the silo, that's what we're going to do now. I've leased the braid out, the small one, the small one but the largest size, so this is uh, 14,000 litres, um, with a 6 metre spreader bar on the back, and what we'll do is, um, we should have enough, I hope 70,000 litres is going to be enough to do this field, um, and that should improve the yield for the next harvest, and then what I'm hoping to do, but probably like I say off screen, is get the seed out. We're probably going to end up doing it through the dark, and getting the field reseeded in the dark. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that all goes, shall we? Got my heart set on some new machinery. New harvester is next on the list. Then another tractor. Possibly replace one, or maybe just get a new one. Now I haven't done lime spreading in ages with one of these. So I need to try to remember what the spread width is. That's actually pretty much bang on. <laughs> How's about that then? That's not bad. That actually worked out better than I thought it was going to. Oh, I can't replicate that. Don't, don't make me replicate that. No. <laughs> I shan't be able to. And then I'll be embarrassed. Hang on. Does that look about right? I don't know if it does actually. Don't think it does. Hang on. Oh, what's the matter with me? I'm forgetting which way to turn. There we go. That was weird. It was like a strange. My fingers stopped working. Yeah, that's alright. Yeah, we'll go with that. Right, so. Lime will go in. 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 Um, did we do a second? I can't remember if we did a second spray on this. A spread on this of fertilizer. Did we or did we not? Uh, let's have a look at our soil composition. So now, oh no, we did one. So liming level is coming off. Plowing has been done. We have got one fertilizer state on there. So once we've limed, we will get a second fertilizer state on, and then we'll seed. Or we'll seed then another little state on it. We'll do it some way around. Um, we'll see how far one load of this goes. Um, I'm hoping with the next tractor purchase, 
Um, we should be able to increase the size of our machinery we're using cultivators, potentially cedar. Um, like I said before, ploughs, there's not really a lot you can do with that. Um, but we'll see how we go. I have hired a worker, certainly because I don't trust myself to do straight lines with this. But actually, you know what I will do? I'm going to take over. So I can line this up again. Is that about right? That'll do. Cruise control on. Yes. Oh, like I say, sometimes it even looks like I know what I'm doing. So by the morning, contract-wise, I, I am going to pick up a few. I couldn't figure out why, for the last little while, I haven't had any contracts pop up on the big fields. 29, 10, 11, um, 33, none of them had come up. And when I went down the list, all three of those, and 33, which isn't one of the bigger ones, but it's a fairly big size, um, were all saying they needed cultivating. Um, that's why, because those ones are the ones I was picking up real nice fertiliser contracts on sort of 30, 40 grand fertiliser jobs. Um, but none of them were becoming available because the cultivating hadn't been done on them. So what I'm doing at the moment is um, Sean is over on field 29 cultivating using the farmer's equipment and then hopefully some fertilising jobs will come up. If field 10 is still available to cultivate we'll probably jump onto that. So I might work quite late into the night on this again. We'll see how we get on with it. We are doing all right with the line. Line up and boom over a little bit. I think there we go. I uh, certainly think seventy thousand litres should be enough to cover the field, shouldn't it? We should be all right. So, with the sun setting, I'm not going to do what I've done before. Like I said, uh, was that the last episode? The end of the last episode. I'm not going to put up a long list of the contracts I completed overnight. Just, uh, just to know that I am going to do something. i tell you what, here's an easy way of doing it. Um, if I just put that on, if we go across, let's look at it this way. If we look at here, uh, missions completed, 62 total, one in this session. So by the morning, that should have gone up. It might have only gone up by three or four or something like that, but when we check it again tomorrow and the money's gone up, I hope the money's gone up, um, we'll come and check that again and that should say something like 64, 66, whatever it might be. So you'll see that I've done more missions and that'll explain where the money's gone. That way there's no there's no jiggery pokery, there's no I haven't just cheated money in or anything like that overnight, you know, or anything underhanded. So uh, I'll see you in the morning. Um, hopefully this will be seeded and fertilised again with soybean. Oh some point we need to start getting our livestock but as well as that I do still need to cut and ted and collect hay off of field 8 don't I haven't done that yet because we need that too maybe we'll do that in the morning get some grass work done did the straw did the silage bales so hay is going to be the next thing we're going to need um, so yeah see you in the morning It's 7.07 .07 in the morning. We are up at the main store, as you can see. Both our harvesters are up here. Out with the old and in with the new. We are selling both of the harvesters. Uh, the massive focus of, uh, <laughs> The case. I say massive focus. The case dealership here. Um, I've said they can get us a good price on both, which is fantastic. Um, we are up to 766,988. I'm coming to collect some more fertilizer that we just purchased. Um, I will explain how and why, but I think you're probably going to already know. Um, the end of last episode, we were at 62 contracts complete, and I'm trying to remember if I said it or not. Um, I haven't started editing this video together yet, so I can't remember what I put in the first bit. This has been recorded over a couple of days. Um, that I realised, as far as contracts went, 
I hadn't had any contracts come up on the big fields. So field 29, field 10, field 11, uh, field 33, there's a couple of other ones that are fairly big. Um, the contracts hadn't come back up on those, and I couldn't work out why. It was because they needed cultivating. All three of them, four of them, needed cultivating jobs doing. Once the cultivating jobs were done, then the sowing jobs became available. Once the sowing jobs were done, then fertilising jobs have become available. So what I did was took on the cultivating jobs using borrowed equipment. I didn't use my own. I borrowed equipment from the farmers themselves. Um, and apart from the sowing, the sowing I did myself with my own uh, planter because that just made more sense. Um, so we're putting a lot of hours on. So if you'll see now, we are on missions completed 71. <laughs> so I did another nine <laughs> overnight. Um, and because they were the big fields, they were nice payouts. I mean, pretty good payouts. So we've just taken on, as you just saw, uh, another third size of month for field 29. That's going to pay another 50 grand. So we are in a position where, when we sell these two harvesters, we can buy ourselves a new harvester. We're probably going to be able to buy ourselves some other new gear too. What I do need is a set of mowers. What I do need is a tedder, although the tedder I might be more inclined to lease. But we are going to need a, a set of double mowers. So that's going to be the next purchase. Um, actually, let's just pull over. Because I can't read it while I'm driving. If we go on to... I've oh, done it again. If we go on to this one here and we go to our map screen. You'll see that our field 3 isn't ready to harvest yet. That was our first soybean harv uh, field planted. The big field next to our farm. Uh, field 35 has been uh, ploughed and fertilised, but it does need lime, so I'm going to put a bit of lime on that. I'm going to put sugar beet in that. Now, I can't remember who it was that messaged me, and I'm so sorry. If it was you, thank you very much. It was a little bit of advice, and it was that potatoes and sugar beet, generally speaking, sugar beet hit yields higher than potatoes. Plus, I can plant sugar beet with the equipment I've got already, I don't need any specialist planting equipment to um, plant it. And harvesting, sugar beet harvesters are bigger, if you go down the route of a self-propelled one, than the potato harvesting gear we've got available. Which is all, they're all very valid points. So I think we're going to do sugar beet. I think. That's the plan. Um, our second field, 17, which I was liming, you saw me liming earlier. And I said I wanted to get it planted before it got dark because I wanted it growing by the morning. That's on its second or third. Anyway, it's growing. It's not as far along as field three, but that has got soybean in. That has got soybean in. But our attention is going to be on field eight. We need to get that mowed, tedded. If we can, wind road. Although I'm hoping... I see the problem with tedding is even if you use mowers that windrow, as soon as you tether it, spreads it back out again. So I might just have to bite the bullet on that. I think I might just mow it. Um, and then, I mean, there are ways of doing it with various different the hay bobs. And I've done it before with all different ones. But I think I might just go old school, you know. I might just mow it all, then come and ted it all, then windrow it all, and then we'll bale it. I think is going to be the way to go. Then the bales will all be taken down to our cow farm. We'll put them in the building here along with the silage bales and the straw bales we've got already then we're good for total mixed ration then we can look at getting our cows which is going to be the next step after that so i'm going to get this down to field 29 we're going to get this cracking on that contract uh we're going to i mean we've got enough money to buy the new harvester now it's not going to be i reckon at some point during today field three is going to be ready to um harvest so we're going to look at buying the new harvester um yeah, um, and that hopefully will have the capacity and the cutting width of both of those smaller ones combined. That, at least, is the plan. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. Um, I'm going to get this going, then we'll come back up to the store with the Puma. We'll grab... Um, we'll just start off by grabbing a butterfly mower. I think I might just grab the other one that goes with the... Um, where do I go for in the end? The Vicon. I've got the Vicon front one. Um, I was going to go and try and sort out a triple mower setup that I could put on the front. So I could mow and Ted at the same time. You know what? I might do that. So I might end up selling the Vicon in all honesty. Uh, we'll see. I've got, I've got an idea. 
an idea forming in my head. That's never good. <laughs> it's never a good sign when I have some kind of strange idea. Oh, while we're driving down, what about Celie? I mean, Celie G is knocking it out of the park. I'm so impressed with her. Um, that, um, if you've been watching her, if you've gone over and you've subscribed to Celie G's new channel, um, she put out a video yesterday on her own of her just finishing off the plowing we, we were doing at the end of episode two. Uh, and I think she just talks about herself and, you know, just a little bit to kind of get to know Celie G type thing. She recorded that after I showed her to do some editing on the, uh, episode one and episode two of our uh, Holland Seveld. Thank you as well. Um, uh, it's gone again, the name. Uh, Dutch guy messaged me yesterday. It begins with an S. Oh, that's so annoying. Anyway, to give me a load of information about Holland and whatever, and apparently the sh in Holland Scheveld is an S sound, a hard S. So it's Holland Seveld, not Scheveld. So we will get that right for next time. Thank you very much for the information. Um, yeah, so I showed her how to do editing and how I do it, and it's a minefield. When you do it on Share Factory on PlayStation, and then I showed her to do a bit of editing of... Um, thumbnails on Photoshop and stuff like that. Well, that video that she posted on her own, she recorded, edited, did everything all on her own. I had nothing to do with that. She did it. And I'm so proud of her, the fact she just cracked on and did it. Just amazing. So, yeah, hats off to her, thumbs up to her. I'm really, really pleased. Um, something I've always done with all my kids is, um, I've said this before, I know I have, you know, I'll, I'll help them, I'll show them what to do, I'll show them a couple of times if they're not sure about something, and then they're on their own. It's a case of, you know what, you've been shown, get on with it, learn, persevere, adapt, be resilient, and, and crack on, and she absolutely did. Knocked out of the park. So I'm really, really pleased, really happy for it, and everything's going really, really well. So, uh, awesome. Um, I'm going to let this carry on, and I'm going to go and sort out the mower situation. Okay, so, up at the store... And I have a plan. Now, this involves a triple mower setup, which I know not a lot of people are happy with. Generally speaking, a triple mower setup that I'm going to do would be on the back of a tractor um, because it puts a lot of strain on the front three point link. And the f normally, the th rear three point link can is rated at a much higher uh, weight capacity, what it can actually cope with. Um, but. The other thing I'm going to do, which I've never done before, and it's going to be one of those, oh yeah, of course you can, because it's obvious. Um, and here's the thing. And if you're new to all this, this is this may seem a bit bizarre to you. You may not know this, and you know, it may be very helpful. If we go to mowers, um, and you've got the various different mowers, and you've got triple mower setups like these ones here, and we've got the Vicon ones like here. Now these, the Discos and the uh, Vicons will windrow, which we didn't have before. Mowers that could windrow were only modded ones. These are the standard, the Pottingers. Now, you can have that on the front and the Butterfly double mower on the back. But with this one, it's got a three-point link there and a three-point link there. So what you can do is you can link them together as a triple mower setup. So as one bulk unit. Now, that generally speaking would go on the back of a tractor especially tractors where you can change driving direction and swing around in the seat um, but what has often been done and I've done as long as I can remember being able to do it hooking those up as a triple mower setup and you put all three on the front which means you can mow and obviously with some of them now windrow and on the back you can then have your tedder or if you're just doing grass bells a windrower if you want to so you can run that setup and you can get a few things done in one pass which makes life a lot easier um, now here's the thing about it I didn't know whether or not because that comes as a set whether or not you can have the butterfly mower with any other front mower or whether it has to be the pottinger that goes with it now we do have some modded ones so we've got these ones here the Novacat 301 Varia and Novacat X8 Varia um, they windrow whereas the other ones don't. And then we've got this one, the Novacat 810 CF, which is a 10 metre, which I think also windrows, but that doesn't have the ability to set up as a three mower setup. So we're looking at these options. So I've already got the Vicon. I'm sorry, I know this is a lot of talking. I've already got the Vicon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Novacat X8 Varia and hopefully set this up as a triple mower setup. Now that runs out to 8.4 metres. So I need to get a tedder that will also then ted out to at least 8.4 metres. I don't want to go much bigger than that, because then you're kind of going over bits you've already tedded. So we're going to buy that. 
We're going to buy it outright because we're going to need it and we're going to use it. Uh, then we're going to come out and we're going to go to tethers. I'm pretty sure we've got one that's 8.4. It's 8.9, isn't it? Oh, that, that one there, 8.7. So the Kuhn GF8712 is 8.7, which is just a tiny little bit more. That's, what, 30 centimetres? So it's 15 centimetres either side wider than our mowers will mow. Um, so we're going to go for that tether. Uh, now that one I'm going to lease, because we're not going to ted that often that we want to warrant 16 grand on buying one. Um, so we'll lease it. So apologies for anyone, if you know this already and you're already doing it, I know this kind of comes across as almost a tutorial on it, but you know, I have had a lot of comments recently, a lot of people messaging me saying thank you ever so much, because a lot of YouTubers out there do, and it's, it's, very, it's a very easy thing to get into, the habit of assuming people know. I've done it myself, you know, you do stuff, you explain stuff and you're going away and then people message you and say, well, how are you doing that and why are you doing that and what's the point, point of purpose and you do kind of assume that people do know and just because you've been playing the game oh you can right so like i say if we go to that one and lower it we've now got a triple mower set up on the front and because this one gives me the ability to win row if you look again i've, I've shown this so many times before but there's this little bit on the front here you see that little there's a little bar with a little swoosh looks like a little nike swoosh if i open up the help window um, I can swing that in. So if I leave it open, that drops the swath wide. If I do that, that will swath. So the 8.4 metres I'm cutting will swath. But because I'm tedding, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to come back and win row later. I'm going to leave it open. Um, and the front one will mow as it normally does. But that does mean then... Let's close that off. That I can... Um, I can windrow if I want to so I'm going to go and do grass bales again at any point whoa that's heavy now that's why you need something on the back it's a lot on the on the free point on the on the front and you wouldn't you wouldn't in real life be doing it like that you'd have it on the back now that should balance it out so now I've got a setup which will allow me to mow out to 8.4 meters and ted so I can go across and create my hay now again there are numerous numerous ways of doing this this is not the only way of doing it you can do it using the chrome big m with a, with a tether on the back um I mean, there are loads and loads of different setups now is this tractor rated for this well, i'm probably overloading it a fair bit and like i say is it realistic in this configuration i don't think i've ever seen a farm video where it is now people may correct me and they may send me messages and say look here's a video you know this is a farmer doing it I, you often, like I say, these three mower setups you will normally see on the back of a tractor, not on the front, and the tractor will be driving the other way because it's got a reverse thing. But this just makes life a little bit easier. I can do it all in one pass. Um, once that's all done and the hay is created, I will then go back in and I will um, I will windrow and then we'll bale it. Um, so those bales will then be collected and they'll be put over with the cow farm. So... Uh, all good so we're just waiting as well at some point i think in the next hopefully next hour or so someone's coming to look at both the um harvesters so the harvesters should get sold um and like i say i can i can afford to buy a new harvester now immediately and then just wait but you know we'll get this done first and then um yeah then we'll sort out getting a new harvester so new equipment new mower lease tether we'll get a new harvester oh sorry it was black i didn't see it i didn't see the car it's terrible um yeah and i am going to be getting a new tractor i'm not going to be doing that in this episode um, but we are going to be buying another tractor I say another am i going to get rid of this and replace it no i'm going to keep this i'm keeping the puma we are going to grab it up so here we are. I'm very conscious of the fact this mower might, this um, tractor might not have enough um, oomph for this. So I'll open them both out. Now they're both raised at the moment, but what I might be able to do is normally you can do them both at the same time. So open up the tether as well. So I'm just wondering whether with all three mowers running and the tether, whether the tractor's got enough horsepower. But as you can see, the tether comes out pretty much. The same width as the mower so what we can do now is switch to the front turn that on 
front, turn that on, turn that on, drop that down, drop that all down together. And away we go. So we are mowing and tedding, so producing hay in one pass. Like I say, it's nothing new, but it's been, you know, been done for a while um, this is just a slightly different way of going about it um, and again it may not be everyone's cup of tea they may not want to do it this way they may not be happy about it it's just the way I'm doing it and then we'll come back we'll win row and then we'll bail but it does mean you can get it all done with well, this part of it anyway one pass um, there are people running all sorts of weird and wonderful setups that allow you to do all sorts of crazy things with <laughs> with bales and you know, the turns aren't always as great because you can miss bits so sometimes you have to come back over with the tether if you miss bits. Because what will happen is when, when you come to windrow, I mean, normally the grass will get picked up with it and it won't be a problem. Um, but I know when you're bailing, sometimes you catch a bit of errant grass when you're doing hay and that kind of thing. It can cause you problems. But for the time being, so I might put the lights on, it's still quite dark. That's better. Now we can see a bit better. And this tractor is having no problems at all with regard to horsepower. We are absolutely motoring so yeah happy days pleased with that I haven't seen the thing come up to say that the what has it come up was I just not paying attention whether the um, fertilizer is done on field 29 which is right in front of me or it could be it's run out of fertilizer but I don't recall seeing it come up I might miss some bits here and if I do again it's not going to be I can always come back and mop up some of the extra bits, but... Tight turns with mowers and things aren't always fantastic. You can often miss bits, but that seems to be working pretty much spot on. Awesome. Now, depending on whether you're watching these videos, the Stone Valley ones, or you're watching the videos of myself and CDG, we are off on holiday to the Lake District tomorrow, Saturday morning. Early start, we've got about a five, six hour drive. Um, and then, like I said, we are taking our stuff with us, so we are hoping to still be able to do some videos and do stuff while we're away. That is the plan. Um, we are still going to make sure we enjoy our break and that kind of thing as well. Um, so yeah, bear with us and honestly we're away for a week I don't know how many videos we'll get done it's also going to depend on the Wi-Fi as to how quickly and how well they upload but again we will do our best we are going to try and do some vlogs as well um, whether we'll post those while we're away we might edit those and post them when we get back um, so please just bear with us be patient I don't know if I'm going to do any mod reviews because what will often happen is we'll get up in the morning we'll, we'll get up and we'll normally knock a video out or do whatever we're going to do then we head off for the day and do what we're doing we're off and out and about doing things when mods drop I know in previous on previous holidays what I've done is I've got up the following morning and done the mod review for the day before um, I often get criticized for that I get messages people telling me that I'm way behind and why have I bothered doing it because my mod review so late and I was my kind of argument to that is on a scale of what? <laughs> on a scale of the video being up for 24 hours later than everyone else's, or not even 24 hours, on a scale of it could be posted for the next, you know, however many years, and people are going to watch it potentially, you know, not everyone's going to watch in the first 24 hours, so on what scale is it late, you know? Yes, compared to other people doing mod reviews that post Johnny on the spot and they're there and bang and the videos are up, but anyway, regardless of all that, um, you know, we'll see. That is what I'm saying. We'll kind of, we'll try and be a bit loosey goosey with it. I don't normally have a set recording schedule anyway, but it's going to be kind of even more kind of fast and loose while we're away. But, um, so please bear with us. We will endeavour to persevere. So, uh, I'm going to carry on and see you in a little while. Once this field is all done, we'll go and grab a wind rower and then we'll get that done. Uh, and then it'll be the bailing of this as well so we'll get all that done hopefully by the time that's all done field three will be ready to harvest 
the two harvesters should have been sold by a new harvester and we're going to crack on that. Whether that will happen in this episode or not is all going to depend on the harvest itself and whether it's ready. Um, so what I'm going to do is back up again. Probably should be backing up with, a, with the mowers or the tether really. but. Now I'm waiting quietly round the corner. I'm coming up to the store to get the wind rower. As you've just seen, all the hay's done. Um, we've made, so we've made the hay. Our new harvester has arrived. Both uh, harvesters were sold. With the contract completed on field 29, we're now fertilising on field 11. That's not completed yet, but we were up to about 954 grand or something like that. So we have spent a fair old chunk but what we have got is that we've got ourselves a case 8240 it's 500 and something horsepower so I'm not you know not knocking it um, the 560 joules I can't remember we went before on the front um, 560 joules I think that's gorgeous. 14,400 litre capacity. Um, so if we take the other two harvesters we had, that's pretty much the same capacity. The other two headers we had were a 6 metre and a... Is it a 5 or is it a 4? This is a 13. We've gone for a Draper 45 foot header. So 13.5 metre header. So that, when you look at each of those rotor sections, is bigger than the sections we had before so that one harvester now replaces the two we had which means one lot of servicing costs one header you know, repair bills and that kind of thing now are we going to get more harvesters probably further down the line as we make more money we're actually going to and like i said we are going to get another tractor as well our fields still aren't ready field 17 and field three isn't it yeah um still aren't ready to harvest but i cannot wait to get this out in the field and give it a bit of a bit of a go as you can see US spec it does come with an EU spec um, I can't remember who the manufacturer is of this one but when I remember when we come to the editing the manufacturer in inverted commas will come up on the screen now of who makes this particular one I know it's case H in real life but you know what I mean you know what I mean so uh, wind rowers we want to get the biggest wind row we can that we can pull <coughs> excuse me lost my voice there uh that requires oh 145 horsepower i'm going to go for the swadro the Cronus swadro um it's 19 meters and it's an absolute beast and i love it i can't remember the last time i used that sussex farms was it some of like that uh, i'm going to leave it all standard we're just going to lease that Um, so like I say, once we, I say like I say, I can't remember the last time I said it, but when we do our own harvest and we've got those two massive soybean fields, providing the price comes back up or stays up or we'll see where we're at, um, we should have enough money, well, we, we will definitely have enough money to buy a new tractor, just whether or not we'll have enough to get a second, oops, a second harvester. But then we need to start looking at, once the hay bales and stuff are done and off and uh, in storage, of starting up the dairy production so uh, we're going to get our cows so there's going to be a few things we need to buy with cows uh feed mixer and stuff like that so um yeah it's all good i'm really pleased uh, i'm gonna go this way back i think 
I'll see you down the field in a minute. Let's get some wind rowing done. And we'll probably finish this one off, I would think. We'll get the wind rowing started, and if not, done. And then potentially we'll get the baler back out and we'll get the bales done. Um, that, that was my plan for this session, was to sell the harvesters, buy the new harvester, get the hay field or the fields done for hay, get it ready, wind rowed, baled. I didn't necessarily have it in my head that I was going to get it off the field yet. Actually, not what we'll do. I'll put the beacons on. Because we are... Um, on a main road, I suppose what I should do is put those on too. Saitec, hell, Logitech, heavy equipment side panel. You can have hazard lights. It's got a dedicated button. I absolutely love that. Don't use it very often because I know whenever I use it, people then message me and go, "How are you doing that? I can't do it on my PlayStation." It's because I've got a side panel. There isn't a, a button. There seems to be a lot of confusion as well when I when I often do this, and then all the chat or the comments go bonkers. And um, let's turn those off and people will say, yeah, you can do it. It's um, R1 and up on the D-pad. R1, R1 and up on the D-pad gives you beacons. So that's what R1 and up on the D-pad does. Um, R1 and left on the D-pad gives you left indicator. Right on the D-pad gives you right indicator, but there's no way of putting hazard lights on or four-way flashers. It depends where you're from, what you call them. But with the Satec side panel, or Logitech side panel, as it's called now, button 14, bomb. So, uh like I said, when I first got it, I think it's worth it just for that alone. I uh, love that. So, uh, yeah. sorry, I just thought I'd add that in because I know people will ask. And it does seem to cause a lot of controversy and then people then start arguing about the button configurations and what ones do what. But that's what it does. So, uh, yeah. This is a nice big old uh, wind rower, so we should get it all done fairly quickly. Again, I've leased this, I haven't bought one, um, because normally if I'm mowing, I will mow and windrow at the same time, or just use the front mower, like I did when I did the silage bales, um, which means I can run a triple mower setup now. When I do silage bales, that's going to be amazing. Triple mowers on the front, swathing, with the fast bale on the back, I can do silage bales at a rate of knots. It's going to be brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. Let's open that out. Beacons off, flashes off. On, down. This one sometimes has a bit of an issue on the hillsides for some reason, on slopes. It doesn't like it, and sometimes the whole thing slides. Um, it's just, it is what it is. I'll go around the outside first. Um, once I've got this baled, I will then come over and re-fertilise again, so we get maximum yield again. At some point, I am going to do another load of silage bales, and I will do the whole field. Those silage bales will be made to sell. Um, so, yeah, that's all. What I'll do is silage and put it in the bunker silo. I haven't quite decided which way around I'm going to do that yet. But at some point, I'll get onto that. Got loads and loads of things I want to do. I have been considering doing greenhouses. I haven't done those for a while. Or maybe get a bit of a kind of market gardeny type thing going, but I mean that's that's a, um, I suppose there are areas around the US. The US is a massive country, and that's what I've said before. Um, it's very difficult to to say. Oh, you know, from television programs and things I've watched and the farming channels and things, I can't say categorically. Oh, yeah, in the US they don't have big like um, market gardens and loads of greenhouses because there are so many facets to the US, so many different kind of climates and topography and all the other stuff that, that you know, it's a huge huge country, and, and even if you're living in the US, I think it would be very difficult to say, oh no, we definitely do, or no, we definitely don't because there's probably somewhere in the US that somebody does, you know, they'll have a load of greenhouses and they'll be doing whatever it is they're doing, so maybe I will it may not be necessarily that's something they do in Illinois, but I'm sure somewhere in the US they do I definitely want to do some cotton, and I want to have a go at doing some sugar cane. Because I haven't done sugar cane for a while either. Again, there may not necessarily be crops that are normally done in Illinois, but I'm going to have a go. I will come and tidy anything up that's gone a bit awry. Generally speaking, I'll do another whiz round at some point, and I'll clear it all up. Because often you'll get bits where it catches like there I went really close to those bales those aren't my bales they're kind of they're just map bales Let's see if I can get that right in there we go perfect and using such a big windrow as well you've got massive swaths here 
So when we come round with the baler, we're just going to be chucking the bales out at quite a rate. Now I'm hoping for... A, I'm not going to get 100 bales, but as close to 100 as I can get. That will put me pretty much at my 200 bale limit, because I'm already just over 50... I'm mean, just over 100, 50 of each of the straw and um, silage. I don't think I'm going to get 100 off this. But I, with the ratio I do for my total mix ration, like I said, it's just a ratio that I use. I have double the amount of hay to straw and silage, so that's why I want to get 100 bales if I can, or as close to. Because to be fair, some of the straw bales are going to be used for bedding, although I do have loose straw in the silo, so... Right, I'll do what I said before then. I will carry on doing this. Just to show you that you know, this is what I'm doing. We are sorting this out. We are going to get it done. I'm enjoying the big difference, in all honesty, between doing this um, and doing it like, like I normally do on my Let's Plays, where I try and get a few jobs in. So I'll start off a job, then I'll say, you know, I'll see later on, then I'll come back later on, and I'm finishing, or I'll do a time lapse. But what I'm enjoying when I'm doing the co op with Silly G is the fact that because we run straight through for an hour, we don't kind of edit chunks together. In essence, you are, you are only going to get one job done, unless you're doing lots of little small jobs. Little small jobs? Lots of little jobs or lots of small jobs. You're only going to get one job done. Like the other episode, we were both chatting and we were talking and we were having a laugh and I only ploughed one field. Now again, that's not going to be for everyone. I know some people found that a bit boring. Um, um, but I think it's more about us playing together and like I did say on that episode and other ones we are going to do episodes where we are doing things together we are going to do episodes where we're doing kind of easier quicker projects to do it's not always going to be a whole episode of just you know, whatever it might be but anyway like I said see, huh. see you in a bit right then Windrowing is complete. I've collected the fast bale from the shed. The windrower has gone back. We are currently sitting on created bales total 103 um, because we've got 50 straw, 51 silage, and then there were the two alfalfa bales. Well, one was grass and one was alfalfa, um, which we've still got, which means I can only go to a maximum of 97 hay bales. Now, I don't think I'm going to get 97 off here. I'm... I don't know, what do you reckon? What do you reckon at the moment? If you had to guess, right at this precise moment, what do you reckon we're going to get? I reckon we're going to get 60... 65? 67, maybe? Don't know. We'll see. I'm going to start off. Um, now, these shouldn't wrap, because it doesn't wrap hay. It's supposed to just wrap grass. Hay and straw are just supposed to come out of the back. Now, the, the thing with this, uh, the Vicon... I'm going to have to go back over some of these bits as well, is that it slows right down because the feed will only accept a certain amount in at a time. There we go, first hay bale directly out of the back, so it didn't wrap it, that's good. So I know when this first came out, a lot of people were saying it's not working, it's rubbish, it, it says it will uh, collect at a certain speed. Now I'm only going six, seven, five, four. It's because of the amount of swath that's going in. Because these swaths are so big, the baler can't, cope with too much going in so it will slow right down to enable it to take in as much as it possibly can but look at the rate these are coming out the back I'm going to put cruise control on I am going to have to go back across because actually the pickup's not as wide as I thought it's going to be and I'm missing a few bits here and there it's going to roll isn't it it shouldn't roll too far it'll go down to the dip in the bottom here and should stop if it does so yeah I don't know what are your predictions what are you reckoning I'm sticking with 60... Oh, I don't know now. <laughs> it seems to be a lot, doesn't it? Coming out the back. We will reach a point where it won't let us do anymore. There's a lot in these swaths. I'm going to have to rethink this. Have we done already? Let's check and see what says created bells this session. Eight. Mm. Okay. What do you think?
Oh, it's so nice doing round bales and not having to keep stopping and unloading and going back again. So, I will do the same with this. We have started off, got an estimate. I will see you when we either get to 97 and I can't do any more, or we finish. And then we'll check and we'll see how many actually you end up with. In this episode, I'm not going to, I'll collect them, I'll pick them all up and we'll take them over because I know people don't want to see me loading another bale trailer. And much as I love using that bale grab, I'll do that off screen. Um, <laughs> Because there's only so much that you can, you can put up with. Um, mm, yeah. Scary stuff. So, what was your guess? We blew through 67. Just putting it out there. Blew through 67 across the field. <laughs> yep. Um, good news too. Contract field 33 is finished, so we're up to 531,000. Field 3 is ready to harvest, you can just see across there, the lovely golden soybean. Um, I'm going to finish off this little bit. We haven't quite got enough for another bale, that's annoying. But, let's raise that, fold it, and let's check. 90. We created 90 bales. So I was seven shy of the target, well, the maximum I could have gone to, but I'll tell you what, I'm happy with 90. Um, so we have created bales total 193, so we're still under the 200 bale limit. Um, these are going to need to be collected and taken over to the dairy farm. This is all going to go back and be put away. Uh, what I might do actually is I might reset it. Otherwise that hay is going to sit in there and the next time we use it, the first bale that will be hay. Not that's a bad thing actually, that could work in our favour. Um, give us an extra hay bale. So, I'm going to head back with this. Um, I've just taken the spreader. Oh, Carl has taken the spreader. Um, up to field two. There's a contract in there for fertilising for about 15 grand. 15 or 17 I think it was. Our soybean here is still growing and won't be far off. Next episode, we're going to be trying out the new harvester. We're going to get down on field three. We're going to get some harvest done on soybean, try and make a bit more money. Um, and then, potentially, with the hay all off the field, we'll look at buying our feed mixer and getting some cows. And then, like I say, long term, a new tractor. And then, obviously, field's going to be reset with a new tractor. It means we can get a bigger cultivator. We should be able to get a bigger... Um, possibly a bigger seeder, too all of it will increase in size is what we've been hoping for so anyway we have come to the end of this episode i hope you've enjoyed it if you have give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching